Good morning guys. Welcome to the final science time. Thank you so much to everyone who's been joining in. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. So for today, I thought we'd finish off by having a little bit of fun. We're going to be doing a two-parter. For the first part, the equipment's nice and easy. All you need is a balloon, any type of balloon, and a hex nut. Now this is a little nut that's in a hexagon shape, a little metal one. If you've got one of those, that's all you need. So let's have a go at the first part. Okay, so job one. First thing we need to do is we're gonna put our hex nut into our balloon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to blow it up. So now I've blown up my balloon and my hex nut, you can just hear it, is inside my balloon. Now, I can make the balloon scream. <laughs> now this is a brilliant thing to do around Halloween time. So I thought if I show you now, then you'll have it ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to slowly spin our balloon. And if we spin our balloon, then we should start to make a sound which sounds like a scream. brilliant to look. So how does it work or why does it work? Well we've been learning about motion and sound. What forces are acting on the hex nut? Well as you move the balloon it makes the hex nut move in a circular path. Do you remember we were talking about this in another science time? Otherwise the hex nut would want to go off in a straight line. Now also if there was friction inside the balloon that would cause the hex nut to slow down or stop but there's little friction between the hex nut and the balloon. If you had a pale or a transparent balloon, you'd see the centripetal force in action. The hex nut, hex meaning six, hex nut has six sides and the flat edges cause the hex nut to vibrate inside the balloon. You can feel it when you do it, you can feel it vibrating inside the balloon. And that screaming sound is made by the hex nut vibrating against the inside wall of the balloon. So what else could you investigate? Well, maybe you could try more than one hex nut in the balloon. Maybe you could try to make it scream loud or scream quiet. Maybe you could try inflating it to different sizes. Does that make a difference with the sound? Maybe you could try other items, maybe something like marbles. Would marbles make a balloon scream? Something for you invest to investigate. Now let's try the next part. Now for part two, we're going to make something to go alongside our screaming balloon. Now, you're going to need tissue or tissue paper. I've just used a normal tissue. You're going to need a balloon. You can already inflate it. You're going to need sellotape, scissors, and a pen might be handy just to draw your outline. Okay, if you have all of the equipment, now let's explore static electricity and something to accompany our screaming balloon. So, job one. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw an outline of a ghost onto our tissue or our tissue paper. Now remember you don't have to do a ghost, you could do a baby. A baby screams, so you're going to draw your outline and then we'll cut it out. So I've drawn my outline, I've tried to do two different ghosts and I'm just going to cut them out. Remember, try to get an adult to help you with this part and just do it carefully. Goodness, that bit was really fiddly. Okay, once you've cut out your shapes, then what you're going to do is you're going to tape the bottom of them, so along here with some sellotape, to a surface. Now just make sure that the surface is a surface you don't mind or your parents don't mind you using sellotape on. Okay, let's do the next stage. Now if you haven't already done so, blow up your balloon and tie it. And now you're going to need to rub your balloon on your hair, or if you don't want to ruin your hair, because mine will go really knotty, you might want to find something like a woolly jumper and rub it about 10 to 15 times and then come back. 
Now hold your bling over your ghost and watch them dance. You can have your screaming balloon going on in the background. You could try to make them a little bit closer together and see if you can bring up the ghost together. Maybe see if you can get them to come up a little bit or all the way up. Now, why does it work? Well, when you rub the balloon on your hair or on your jumper, invisible electrons build up on the surface and these were able to pull on the tissue ghost. So opposite charges attract and you made your ghost move. So you were using static electricity. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, guys, please post your comments and your photos on the Purple Mash blog. It'll be really lovely to see all the things you've done. And don't forget, you can go back to any of the Science Time videos. I hope you've really enjoyed Science Time. I've loved doing it. I'll see you later. Bye for now.